Welcome to the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Kylie Burton. If you have been told that your blood work is normal, yet you feel awful, well, this is the place for you. Because whether you have a diagnosis or not, I'm going to teach you how to turn those normal labs into real answers, healing, and hope. So grab your blood work. Come join me. Here we go. This is the what are inside your normal labs, what is inside your normal labs workshop today. And we are talking about five very key markers that will change the game when it comes to your health concerns and overcoming them. The biggest question I ever get asked is, what labs should I order? When you go to your doctor and they ask for blood work, be kind of pushy about this, all right? This is all regular blood work that they can simply check the box and order. So the list is this, the CBC with what we call differential. This is what we're going to be talking about today, is that exact lab. Then we're going to add on the metabolic panel. This is often called the comprehensive metabolic panel. We're going to add on the lipid panel, which is known for cholesterol and triglycerides. We're going to add on the thyroid panel. These are all blood work that you should ask your doctor to order. If you don't have one, well, I can order them for you no matter where you're located in the country. What's included in this is a TSH at minimum, I would say free T4, free T3, and uh, TPO and TG antibodies. Now, if you guys don't understand what this is, that's totally fine. Just write these things down. When you go to your doctor, you hand them the list. And then I would also add a reverse T3 to this. That's specifying what would be included. That's basically the minimal components of a thyroid panel. Then we have our lovely iron panel. Those are all the panels we talk about, CB, the five panels. Then we're going to add in components like HSCRP, vitamin D. And I want to add in the blood sugar components. So things like blood glucose, A1C. And then I'll put in a separate box over here. If you're interested in your hormones, I would ask for all the hormones. Just because you think you have low T doesn't mean you should just get low T or just get T tested. There's a whole lot to your hormones in just taking one. In fact, everything we're going to talk about today impacts your hormones. I have a lot of patients that come my way who are working with another hormone therapist of some sort. And whether they're getting very far or not doesn't matter because they realize that there's more to their body than the endocrine system, than the hormones. That would be what I would recommend you get your doctor to order because that's going to be basically all of the puzzle pieces you need. Now think about your health as a big puzzle. The more puzzle pieces you have, the better, which drives me crazy because when we go to the doctor's office, they only take, you know, snippets of it. If you're only going to take snippets of it, you're only going to get pieces of the puzzle. And today I'm going to teach you guys how to put that puzzle together. So not only are we going to talk about these five key markers, we're going to talk about now that you know what's hidden inside those five markers, what is the step-by-step process to heal? Here's the next component here. As I talk about this blood work and, and I bring these labs up and these markers So those labs that are sitting next to you, you want to find the CBC with differential. That's the lab we're going to be looking at. So the CBC with diff, okay, stands for differential. The very top marker on the CBC is what we call the white blood cell count. The white blood cell count. So these normal lab ranges, they're like this, right? These are the lab ranges that you go to your doctor, you get the blood drawn, you're like, what the heck is wrong with me? Because all of my blood work keeps coming back in normal range. Normal ranges are here. We're going to condense them 
and look at functional ranges. Okay. Now I give credit where credit is due. Functional ranges are or were created by a doctor by the name of Dottis Karazian. He has nine trillion letters next to his name. Somebody had to do the research and come up with them. However, I have tweaked the ones that we're going to talk about today based upon my expertise and my experience. I'm going to show you guys with some examples what I mean by it as soon as we understand what these five markers are. Actually, we're going to do six today just for fun because we can. So that's where they come from. Imagine it like, okay, here's a normal lab range, all right? I've got some of you guys from California, some of you from New York, so perfect. It's like trying to find your favorite restaurant somewhere between California and New York. Good luck, right? That's why it's so frustrating because we have this model that doesn't work. So we've had to change the model up. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the normal labs, ranges, we're going to make them smaller. I'm going to show you these smaller labs today. And then if you fall outside of those smaller lab ranges, what it means. Let's stop searching for the diagnosis. Let's flip our minds in the way that we're going to think right now. And let's start searching for what is causing my body to go south. The way we're going to read this blood work is in a way that's going to help us walk through our healing journey to go from unhealthy to healthy. All right, just making sure we're very clear on what to expect. We're not reading labs to diagnose. I'm not even going to read labs to trace symptoms. I'm going to read labs. I'm going to teach you how to read your blood work in a way that's going to go from unhealthy to healthy. Pretty cool. All right, back to the CBC with differential. The very top marker inside that blood work or on that lab is the white blood cell count. That white blood cell count, the, I, I can't even tell you what the normal lab range is because I don't ever use it, but the functional lab range is five to eight. And that's the range we want to use. But I will say this. This range, I'm going to like put a frowny face over here because it's not the perfect range. We're always going to check these five markers we're going to talk about today in, in depth before we just jump to a conclusion with the white blood cell count. Okay. So if you're sitting at like a 4.1 or a 9.7, any, any, time you're outside of that range, your body is fighting the biggest issue that I see in health concerns now. And that's what we call an infection. This is not the kind of infection where you're going to be able to run to your doctor and they're going to know what to do with it. These are not infections that are going to come up positive on a test. Thank goodness. Because if you have E. coli, C. diff, Campylobacter, H. pylori, whatever it is, and that test is actually positive, you're probably in a very miserable, miserable, miserable state. These type of infections are what I call low grade, but they're just in the body damaging it enough to make your life not as enjoyable as it could be. All right. Now, what type of infection? That's where the five markers really shine. So look inside those that blood work you're looking at and look for the marker called neutrophils. If you don't see this marker, then chances are you only have a CBC. These five markers are what is included in the differential portion. So if you're missing it, go back and ask your doctor to take a CBC with a differential next go around. Okay. There are two different types. There's the absolute and the percentage. We want to pay attention to the percentage. The magic number for neutrophils is 60%. If you find yourself above the 60% marker, you are fighting some type of bacterial infection. Chances are it's more than one, but it doesn't really matter because when it comes to the natural world, Treatment's going to take care of what's there. It's not like an antibiotic where it's just going to go in and destroy everything. Okay. 
All right. Anything above 60%, we're looking at bacterial infections. What does this cause in us? Well, these are the big three things that I see. I see GI problems like indigestion, constipation, diarrhea. It may go get to the point where it is called GERD, acid reflux, maybe even um, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's or, I mean, you name it. There's a lot of problems within the GI tract. This leads to GI concerns. It also leads to joint pain. So maybe you're looking at a diagnosis of rheumatoid arthritis or just arthritis in general. You know, they're saying, oh, you're old. This could be a problem. Well, there's more to it than hate. All right. And because we have these infections that our body is constantly fighting, it can lead to a whole lot of other things. But one of the other big ones are autoimmune diseases or autoimmune reactions, where the immune system is just layered and it kind of just makes your body freak out in a way. These can appear with flares. So, so say, for example, you've got there's MS and you see the commercial for MS and it's like, oh, take this injection that eliminates your flares. Well, there's a reason why your body is causing flares or experiencing flares. So when these infections become a little bit more dominant. So when I look at the numbers, the numbers to me tell a story. And the more labs you have, like if you're one of those people that have five different sets of labs from the last five years, like every single lab set is going to tell a story. That's really cool. All right, we're good with the neutrophil count. We're only going to pay attention to what's elevated right now. If it's above 60%, we're thinking bacterial infection. The next marker we're looking at are lymphocytes. That marker should be right below the neutrophils. And that magic number is 30%. So if you're seeing on your blood work that the lymphocyte marker is above 30%, we're looking at some type of virus. I don't care what type of virus it is because once again, the natural treatment modalities will make those viruses dormant because that's what they're good at. You often see this in two scenarios, chronic fatigue or autoimmune as well. So this is often what explains why somebody gets Hashimoto's at 14 and their mom got Hashimoto's at 42. You have to figure out the trigger 90% of the time with, or even 95 is what research says, autoimmune diseases are triggered by these type of viruses. Type 1 diabetes, the virus that attacks the pancreas. Next marker. The third one down are what we call monocytes. The monocyte magic number is 7%. 7% 7 of the monocytes if it's above 7%, this is an also another indicator for a virus. Again, I don't care what type of virus it is because the natural treatments take care of whatever's there. And these lead to the same thing, chronic fatigue and autoimmune diseases. Does that mean they only lead to these things? No, that just means those are the most prevalent. If your body is constantly fighting this low-grade virus, it's not going to have energy to do anything else. Oh, here's two more. Anxiety, depression. For the same thing. If it's so busy fighting these low-grade hidden viruses, it's going to leave you feeling depressed. Or it's not going to take much to trigger that anxiety. So monocyte count. 7% is the magic number leads to viruses. The last two markers are what we call the eosinophils and the basophils. Okay? Eosinophils, the magic number is 3%, and for basophils, the magic number is 1%. Sometimes these appear on, most of the time they appear on labs. Sometimes it's just the top three markers. 
that we've discussed, and these two are missing. When I see an elevated count on either one of these, first you have to think about allergies. And if you're one of those people who have eliminated like every food under the sun and you're like barely living off of chicken and rice, then the next thing we got to pay, pay attention to are parasites. This is how I deal with parasites. Are, are they an issue? It's based upon this blood work. I'm going to show you guys examples here in, in a few minutes on what we've seen in blood work and what and what we did with treatment and what they what the results were. So this will all make sense once you understand the numbers and then when you start to see it in people and then you're like, wait a second, that's me too. All of these unknown health concerns that we've been dealing with now are no longer unknown. So we have the neutrophil, the lymphocyte, the monocyte, the eosinophil, and the basophil. These magic numbers are 60, 30, 7, 3, and 1. All right? Now, I know this isn't perfect, but when you get your labs, it will be perfect. It's just based upon the decimals and the percentage, percentages. But in your labs, it will always add up to 100. I know that that adds up to 100, adds up to 101, I know. But in your labs, it'll always add up to 100%. Therefore, if something is really elevated, so say you're looking at a neutrophil count of 88%, which is one of those that I saw early on in practice. Um, she had frozen shoulder syndrome. She was my age and woke up, basically woke up one morning and couldn't move her shoulder. They've done chiropractic care, massage therapy, injections. I mean, everything they could think of on the shoulder and nothing was working. So I said, well, that's not worked. Let's try a different avenue. Did they take labs while you've been doing this treatment attempt, att attempting these treatments for the last six months? And they did. So I pulled her labs and sure enough, her lab, her neutrophil count was 88%. So I walked her through the treatment steps, which is what I'm going to teach you in just a, in a little bit here. And sure enough, her shoulder pain is gone. It's moving just fine. And not just her shoulder, but she started to notice that the longer it went on, the more, more of her joints started to happen, have problems. So besides all of her joint pain going away, her husband messaged me and he was like, hey, um, her mood swings are not crazy anymore. She's got more energy. Like, you don't understand how crappy you feel until you start feeling better and these infections go away. And I would bet money that 90% of people who have chronic health concerns are finding some type of infection. And most often when there's one, there's many. Here's the reason why that that is the case. All right. When there's one marker that is elevated, like in this scenario, that is so high that all the other markers have to be low in order for that to be a scenario. Does that make sense? So all the markers have to add up to 100%. So when one is so dominant, there probably still are other infections involved because when there's one infection, there's multiple. It's just one likes to appear dominant in the blood work. All right. Take a look at the neutrophil count. It's 42.1%. Then you have the lymphocyte count at 41.6. Now remember, we want 60, 30. This is a really fun pattern, though. Uh, that pattern leads to autoimmune. So we've got some autoimmune components going on. Monocytes at 5.9, which is under the 7, so that's good. The eosinophil is right there at 9.4. Now, I know from his history that he eats way cleaner than my household eats. <laughs> super, super clean. So food allergies are not a concern. Probably some environmental allergies are not a concern either. We're looking at parasites here. Now, notice he's got 9.4, so that's parasites. Notice at the lymphocyte marker is 41.6, so that's also elevated. 
So we've got two infections going on, and I would bet money that there's three going on because this ratio is autoimmune. And when there's one infection, most often there are more. It's just that one infection is dominant in the blood work. Okay, so think about this. We've got autoimmune based upon these five markers. I can learn all this information. Autoimmune, viral infections, parasites, and I'm even going to include the bacterial infection because I chances are it's there too. It's just the other two are so dominant in the blood work. Okay, this is what I've learned, and I've learned it the hard way. So we've got... Step one is included because if you just st jump straight to killing the infections, your body can't handle it and bad things happen. So step one is all about support. This is where I like to feed the cells and to feed the systems in the body. So you get both approaches there. When you support the body in that way, now step two is a lot smoother. And trust me, I learned the hard way with treating patients. They always are like, well, we want to give rid of these infections. Let's just jump right into it. Okay, well, that's when side effects happen because our bodies are depleted. Now we can tackle the infections, okay? So I'll just say, we'll just call this destruction. There's lots of ways we can describe it, but we're going to destroy the infections. So here's the really cool part. When you get into treatment and you do it the right way with the right stuff, it doesn't matter what infection is dominant in your blood work because the natural products are going to tackle what's there. They're very smart. These are natural herbs and combinations. And we use specific products for a reason. These are products that you have to get with a license. So that way, I mean, they're not something you can just go get off of Amazon and do this yourself. You can try, just you're not going to get the best results. So step one with this gentleman, we're going to support. Step two, we're going to destroy the infections. That's really big for not only his chronic fatigue, but chances are those infections are also attacking his testosterone. So what I've seen is I've helped a lot of people get off of hormone therapy because we go in and we remove all these underlying components that are just tack they're, they're attacking these two things. They're attacking the cells and then they're attacking the systems. So we're going to help this guy out and we're going to help this guy out. Then once those are gone, step three, let's replenish it all. Replenish the cells, replenish the systems, replenish the, the good bacteria, that, that thing we call the microbiome. Now we used to do this in a six-month plan. Sometimes even it took 12 months. But we've got new products now. They're some of the best on the market, if not the best on the market for this, we can do this in three months. Is that crazy, guys? Like, how cool is that? So it's basically one month at each step. Now, I just barely got his labs. And in fact, he got those labs last week. So this is a new patient. Let's backtrack into some previous older clients. So we can see what happens when we did the work. All right. This one is one of my favorite clients to work with. And then it's just one of my favorite because she was uh, 26, 27 when we started working together. And I love it when people realize what's inside their blood work. And they're like, wait a second. I'm spending like $500 a month in supplements that I don't even need. And on top of her, she was, I mean, she had a list. You guys might understand this. Like she is 20, I kid you not. She had 20 supplements that she came in with, plus like another eight or nine pharmaceuticals at 27 years old. Like it was, it blew my mind what she was trying to do. But 
She was in a situation that was just like literally survival mode. And her mom brought her in, or I should say virtual components. So was I on Zoom. Um, but I conversed with her mom and then we met with her. And the biggest struggle in her life at that point was because her health was a disaster. Her new marriage, she'd only been married for like six months, was in complete shambles. And they were thinking about calling it quits when we started treatment. Okay. So I get her blood work and I want to show you guys what I find. All right. There's a lot to your blood work. Um, but just know that I find these things on 90% of people's blood work. I've read the thousands of blood work now. I can read people's blood work in five minutes. So it takes very, it's very quick. But what we've done in this form that you see is we've taken three different sets of labs from this individual, from this 27 year old. So we've got the neutrophil count. We're looking at a 47, 61, and 60. This is why multiple labs are so fun. Because if you take a look, she had out of three different labs, two of them look great. 61 and 60. 32 and 30. Four and six. One and two. But then you get to this one, and it's like, wait a second. That right there with the 47 and the 43, that tells me that She's finding a virus of some sort or many viruses. That's what's dominant in her blood right now. But then I also see autoimmune components. And then that's pretty good. That's pretty good. And that's perfect. So I know that her body is autoimmune. When I say autoimmune, that means that your immune system is attacking anything in your body. Where it attacks is based upon your genetics. And we could get into this whole immune, autoimmune thing. It could be a completely different seminar. So how do we treat? So for her, I believe at that point, it was a six-month program. And for her, we did the support. So we supported her cells and we supported her systems. And then we destroyed those infections. And it was the viral component. That was the strongest, but when there's one, there's many. And the nice thing is, is that treatment doesn't change with what we use. The products tackle whatever is there. It's the way that the earth was designed and we're just using products made directly from the earth. The last but not least, we did replenish. We got all the good stuff back in, healed her cells. Because once we get rid of this, those underlying infections just wreak havoc on anything. So you might have GI complaints, they're wrecking havoc on your GI. These are actually even big components of headaches and migraines. They're big components of chronic fatigue. People always ask me, well, do you treat POTS? Do you treat this? Do you treat that? Do you treat whatever the heck you want to say? I don't treat the symptom. I don't treat the diagnosis. I treat you as a whole person. And when we get all the cells, all of the glands, all the tissues, all the organs, all the systems, when we get all of them working really well together, symptoms just dissolve, just go away. So like I said, she was a six month treatment plan. Nowadays, because this was like two or three years ago, Nowadays, uh, we could do this in three months with the new products, which is awesome. You get so much benefit in three months. What is her life like now? Well, she's still married. So she was able to save her marriage. And not only did we get her feeling like a million bucks, uh, she's no longer on meds. Our supplement list is down to, she buys two in the store per month now. She just loved. So she did the, her healing journey. She's no longer on all the excess supplements that she used to take. And she literally just takes two things that she loved on her healing journey and stays on there. Can you imagine the money that they just saved right here? And then here's the funnest part. Her husband was like, 
wait, if that's what you can do for her, what's hidden inside my labs? And so then we did his. And he had some major GI complaints. He'd been on um, across, the, he'd been in Southern, South America for two years and, and came home and his labs were just, his GI tract was never the same. So found out that he had infections in him, these low-grade infections. We healed, got rid of them. His GI tract is running smoothly. And what they're most concerned about was the anxiety and the mood swings that he was experiencing. So they're probably like 30 years old now, and I haven't heard from them in a while, which is typically a good thing. So doing great. This making sense as you guys can see the numbers and how it lays out and what the simple process is to heal from it. Like it's so simple. That's how fun it is. Hey, if you're new here, welcome aboard. If you're coming back, welcome back. I'm coming back as well. In fact, we're going to have new episodes every Wednesday right here on the Beyond the Diagnosis podcast. If you love what you just listened to and love what you've been listening to, I would be honored to have you leave a review. Leave it on the place where you listen to your podcast so that way more people can find this podcast and get answers from their blood work as well. I'm Dr. Kylie and I'll see you next week.